uh, I should add that when we were arrested, it was not purely because of Church and Quincy. It was because I announced I wanted to be president. And one of the competitors, who made it very plain, he even called me and said, look, you, you cannot go through this thing without coming through me, you know. And we were getting very, very popular. I was not planning on running for real. I was testing the waters. And when I tested the waters, I found it was actually pliable. It, it was going to work. And this fellow actually arranged for a meeting in his house mm -hmm. and decided that I was to be arrested. And the CADs that came to arrest me told me that plainly, we've been sent to arrest you because of your political ambitions. The charge is the red herring. Because people get emotive when you mention religion. People really get emotive in this country. Yeah, if you mention religion, especially in a negative way, somewhat Kenyans just get up in arms. So they use religion in a clever way, as a red herring, to divert attention from the fact that someone was threatened because of my presidential ambitions. And for that reason, they decided arrest and slander was the way out. So we fought it and we won. It's become a nice business deal because I'm going to earn lots of money out of this. Are you still planning to be president? Um, yes. Okay. Yes, I'm a leader. So I am, I've got the plans to one day lead not in the near future because as it is now most of the players in the industry are 50 years upwards yeah so that would give me maybe up to 20 years to keep planning so i want to be president when policy is the key matter and not tribe yeah and we are getting there the beautiful thing about twitter you know social media the internet that's such, it's such a beautiful thing happening to us because Kenyans are finally being heard. Their voices are being heard. Even though people overreact and sometimes they abuse social media. But I think it's one of those teething problems you get when people are growing. So our nation is growing in expression. We were stifled for a long time. You couldn't talk. Now suddenly we've been allowed to talk. So even though there's a lot of verbal diarrhea happening, it's a good thing because we'll ultimately get down to the middle of the pendulum. At that particular time, our politics will have matured to the level that we could be at par with the United States, where it is policy and not tribe. When that time reaches, and I'm working very hard in the background, by the way, educating people and mentoring people. I'm mentoring a lot of politicians. Some of them are MPs, some of them are, um, they want to be senators, some want to be governors. I don't want to mention their names. But I'm doing a lot of mentorship. Every single week I'm meeting some politicians to train them on leadership, especially by use of modern technology and dealing with real issues, not just strive. Yeah. So I think maybe in another 20 years, I should throw my weight in. Yeah. So you, you will go straight to presidency? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go straight to presidency. So I'm going to say Jubilee government has done us a lot of good. It made me stronger. I just realized I could fight a whole government and still succeed. <laughs> I'm telling you, it makes you very strong. There's nothing that scares me now. The interesting thing is that it made me more popular. So it opened me up to greater business prospects, quite contrary to what people thought. And then it strengthened my relationships because I later got to know who true friends were. And that's how Quinty came on board, by the way, because he liked the money. Yeah, so I didn't get to know exactly who he was. I tended to just trust people. I thought everybody meant well. I was really shocked that not everybody's like that. So to that extent, I got good schooling. I didn't get bitter. I don't get bitter about anything. I just forgive like that. Because I'm a Christian, I just forgive. No hard feelings about anything or with anyone. By the way, every single person I fell out with, like the people that left the church, you know, we're all friends now. We're doing business together. Yeah. In fact, the only person that um, we're not talking, we're not in talking terms because she decided to be upset with Miss Esther. Every other person, including her mother, we are friends. Why, why, why did she, what did she say? Esther said, if you don't support Quincy, she doesn't want to have anything to do with you. That's it. So for Esther to remain my friend, I needed to, no, no, she doesn't want to talk to me. I'm open to talk, but she doesn't want to talk. Um, I actually don't know. Actually, yeah, the Quincy killed the child. That, that's there. Yeah. He's, he's, still he's in custody. Yeah. He's, he's actually in prison, in a hospital prison. Because the case is still going on. I don't know how far. 
but the case goes on. In Australia, they're very thorough with legal matters. What about her? She's, she was working in the magistrate's court where she lived, whatever, one of the states there. I don't know the story too well because I'm not really in touch with her, so I don't want to speculate. All I know is that she was working, and then this matter of the death of the baby occurred. It was a big deal. She got arrested, and then she was released. Quincy was incarcerated, and they thought he, was, he had a mental problem, so they took him to a hospital, a hospital prison. Yeah. That's it. That's as much as I know about Esther. I'm open to talk to her if she's willing. I'll be honest with you. Esther can be very stubborn. I know her well. I used to mentor her. From when she worked for Capital FM, you know, people, people thought Esther came on board, especially in our church and our family, after the whole thing. I've known Esther from the days she was working for Hot 96. So the, the, I mean, uh, sorry, the, Capital FM. The that she's your, is she your cousin? Yes, she's my cousin. cousin. Yeah. So you've known her, you know her as family? Yes, yes. That's precisely why she was living in our home. Oh. She was brought by her mother to her house in Rwanda to stay there. In fact, her mother chose a room for her. Yeah. And her mother and brothers used to come over even for prayers we were one whole outfit until quincy came on board and they thought mm -mm, we can't have this and we actually counseled the mother this she'll tell you openly we told her don't fight esther if you fight a woman in the area of love she'll stick to the person she loves that's how ladies are yeah she will stick to this if it doesn't matter how bad the guy is so what you do to a lady is leave her alone then she finds out for herself that she's in a bad relationship, then it's much easier for her to leave. But if you use police to get her out of a relationship, oh yes, she will stick there, and it will be you gluing her to the bad relationship. So until now, she still hasn't healed? She won't, as long as people are fighting Quincy. You see, that's the psychological aspect of a woman when she loves somebody. But so the fact that she so, so allegedly killed the child, mm -hmm. is that enough? For a lady, mm -mm. It's never enough. Do you know how many ladies are battered by their husband and they still stick there? Yes. Yeah. You so tell them, look, this, I know a lady whose teeth were broken. She has, what do you call them? This, that, the, the teeth yeah. that is yeah. dentures. Her teeth are not normal because they were broken by the husband. But she still, and they were broken before she got married. She still went and married the man in a glorious wedding that was televised. Yeah. So... People don't understand about the psychology of relationships. So they think, let's use force. Let's go get Esther out of that relationship. If you use force, when a woman has declared she loves a man, she will stick to that man. Whether the woman is white, black, red, yellow, or technicolor, race doesn't matter. What matters is she loves the person. So the best way to deal with a lady, if you don't approve of her relationship, is leave her alone. <laughs>
and what I know, including strength, inner strength. I would not be having it if I didn't go through what I went through. Would I want to go through that again? No, I'm much wiser. So going through it once made me so wise. So any other thing that is thrown my way, I will be able to conquer. So if we leave Esther alone in her marriage, irrespective of her difficulties, and if people could only focus on their families, if some men could just stop philandering and start loving their wives and leave Esther alone, and some men got annoyed because they wanted her, and Quincy beat them, you know? To wait. That's why some people are so upset. You see, and others are quite happy that she was all way up there, and then she came tumbling. Some Kenyans celebrate people's downfall. It's so terrible, you know. If only they could leave her alone and work on their own families, Esther will get back to her mind. But if everybody's bombarding her, oh, bring Esther back home. Oh, do this and do that. Okay, let's take for example, Esther comes from Australia and returns to this country. What will Kenyans do for her? Yeah. Just two weeks ago, I was with a mother. And we are such good friends. They have finally understood what we said even before we were arrested. When the mother came to our house in Lunda and said, look, I want Esther out of this relationship. My wife told her, leave her alone. If you fight her, she'll stick to this man. And then the, the end result will be much worse than what is happening now. So now they've finally seen it, and they've just left her alone. That way, somebody breathes in and breathes out, and in retrospect, thinks about all the pieces of advice they've been given. And they might even say, maybe these people are right. They might even try on their own some of the pieces of advice they've been given. And then when they see it working, then they start rebuilding their lives. But we shouldn't go traumatizing people like that, and then say, it's a cult, it's a cult. And when, when that so-called cult is taken to court, and witnesses are called to come, they have nothing to say because they never did any research whatsoever. The case is thrown out and the magistrate even told of the prosecutors, you can't wake up one morning and go to somebody's house and arrest them. And of course, I, I have some, to some degree I understand because Quincy practiced witchcraft. And those who knew him, I didn't know him that well because I went to school with him in primary school, class two. And from class two, the next time I'm seeing him is 20 years later. You know, so I didn't know that development, what was it that he was doing. And two weeks was not sufficient time to really catch up. Well, but it, came in, two weeks, then it in two weeks, the arrest occurred before I could even know what was happening. You know, he lied to us that he had come from the United States when the guy was actually here. <laughs> so the people who knew him were busy telling us, this guy is not from the U.S. I said, well, can I find that out by myself? I think I'm mature enough to do my own investigations. And then Esther says they went to university together. They were even in a relationship. I said, Esther, sh really? When people are saying I'm the one who much made them, I was shocked like everyone else that they had a relationship. But because Esther was living in my house and Quincy came to sojourn there, he said, just give me like a month or two to ha have my footing. I'm from the United States. I need to settle on and all that. So he lied to me. And then they picked up their relationship and moved on very strong. And having been arrested together, of course, we had to stick together until all, all that, you know, all the dust settled. And the dust really settled. So I sat with Quincy and Esther and I said, Quincy, according to my own investigation, you are a con man and you practice witchcraft. You brought us much trouble. Um, I told him practically everything that I had known about him. And I asked him to leave my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And leaving he did but not before Esther got very, very annoyed with me. She said, look, you've joined my parents now, you've joined everyone else, you're against me, you're against my marriage, I thought you were a friend. You know how she talks? You know, now we were getting into politics, we were getting into politics, and everybody turned against her. So she could no longer continue as a news anchor. Remember after you've been arrested, you're being accused of being in a cult, people are saying that Joseph Helen is brainwashing you, in fact, we were even accused of dealing in ivory and guns and drugs, you know, so many other things. It becomes difficult. She was taken to a, a psychiatric clinic where she was injected with something called lagactin or something that made her look like she was mad for real. And I was blamed for that. They said, look, you see the drug, she, the drug she's been given by, by the maestro, you know. When, <laughs> so, when do you think all these things happen? Sorry? When do you think all these things Why do I think all these things happen? Yeah. Politics. politics. Yeah, politics is like that. Look what they did to Anwai Guru. 
they just decided to mount pressure on her. Even though she didn't steal a single cent, they mounted so much pressure on her, she had to bow. Look, look, look how they fight people. Look at what happened, what's happened to IEBC. People who have a constitutional role and security of tenure. People who are supposed to be handled constitutionally. In other words, you go to a constitutional court and the constitutional court then interprets for you their responsibility. And if you want them out of office, you use a constitutional means. What means is being used now to get them out of office? Political means. That's Kenya for you. But some of us here are too tough and too strong. It was two things. I was arrested because two days prior, I had announced I wanted to be president. And I said Esther would be my running mate. And they said, oh my goodness, it can't be. If these guys succeed in politics, then we'll not be able to get Esther out of that relationship. And Quincy was the chairman of the party. According to the constitution, presidential candidate cannot be the leader of the party. You understand? So, in their quest to get Esther away from Quincy, they thought the best way to do it is rubbish the whole political ambition. As part of madness that has arisen out of this cult and the drugs they take. Yeah? So, <laughs> you get me. So they said, let's arrest them. Let's slander them. Let's put in media. Let's crush them. And that they tried. And during the arrest, rather than charge Esther with us, they took Esther away back home. So the real reason for the arrest was to separate Esther from us. Yeah? But Esther escaped and came back and rejoined us. So what could they do after that? So there were two reasons. Politics and their perceived cult, which was a creation of their own. Because when they were told to prove it, they couldn't. And now church is not for the perfect. Church is for the sick, the messed up. Even Jesus said that. He said, I've not come for the people who are well that only those who are sick go to doctors, yeah? Then their lives will look very clean. But if you really want to make changes in this world, people will smear you. Yeah, there'll be smear campaigns against you. What will prove that you're a genuine person is how you win. And if you win in a clean way, and you continue with your life, and progress is seen, then the world will be convinced that you're good. Look at Nelson Mandela. Kenyans on Twitter, congratulations. Your voice is being heard, it is really wonderful. You got one of my colleagues kicked out of this country because of kicking a woman. We need to respect women. That's very, very important. I love my wife and I respect all women. I take care of my mother. Men must not kick women. But listen, we need to also give people a hearing, okay? There's always two ways. If somebody is wrong, let them be heard. After that, make a determination based on law, all right? Don't be the jury and the judge and the lawyer and the executioner and the police and the government all in one. But I appreciate you, Kenyans on Twitter. This is Jazz Maestro Helen.